On an 80-mile hike, Father Eduardo took a bunch of pictures of cows. Okay, that isn't one of the main takeaways of the story, but it is something I didn't expect. And I imagine that a pilgrimage is full of things that you don't expect. I'm Kyle Hyman from Max Studios, sharing another story about the world-famous pilgrimage site in Spain, the Camino, not to be confused with the Chevy car truck. And if you like this series, there's an image of a thumb pointing up you can press on YouTube, you can subscribe to this channel, or follow us in your favorite podcast app. And we've mentioned that this is more than just a hike. And Father Eduardo Rivera has a very interesting explanation. Oh, and I promised you a story about taking lots of pictures of cows. So my experience of the Camino was that it wasn't just uh, like an ordinary hike. It was really kind of a, a mini version of a, of a journey through life and a pilgrimage in its in its essence, right? Making that journey to the, the holy site, going to the cathedral in, in Santiago, that was the goal, that's the key. But along the way, kind of Christ puts little signs and little things that helped stretch us and helped us um, grow in our faith, tested us sometimes, um, and helped us grow together as a pilgrim group. One of those starting moments, very, the fir very first day, very first leg of, of the journey, um, we started walking and we were each walking at our own particular pace. And some of us kind of kept up pace with each other. And one of the, one of the people that I was walking with, I probably never would have caught this guy on campus. Never really ran in the same circles, but somehow we clicked, we started walking together on that first day and uh, we got to know a lot about each other. Um, we started talking a lot uh, about life, uh, about our, our own faith journeys, and then we started keeping our eyes open to look around. And we met people from other countries, other places, who have been walking for like a month, doing the very long portion of the Camino Frances. And we also had funny moments too. Like the guy that I was walking with um, from UST, he loved cows. So every time we would see a cow in one of the farm fields along the way, we had to stop and take a picture. Now those, that first day, I probably took pictures of maybe like over 50 cows. But it, it was kind of a reminder that, you know, you never know who you're gonna meet when you're walking on the way, on the Camino. Just like life, right? You never know who you're gonna meet. And community, camaraderie is certainly key Getting away from things, taking time in silence has been a common thread, dealing with adversity. But then there's that theme that we keep coming back to. What are we taking with us? What are we leaving behind? Is that different for a priest? My intention was for the, the Bazillion Fathers and for the university to, to really grow and flourish and become all that it's meant to be to help the Bazillion Fathers really grow and truly continue our work of uh, education and evangelization. Um, we talk about on the Camino, a lot of people leave stuff on the way, right? We're there with our hiking backpacks and you're walking, like you said, maybe the, the max that we were walking was maybe 14, 15 miles a day. And it can get kind of heavy, right? The more that you carry with you, the harder the, the walk is going to be. I mean, going up and down hills, there's rocks, there's mud, there's a little bit of everything. Um, so it gets easier if you leave some of the things behind, right? So you might start out packing, overpacking, putting too much in there, but each and every day you, you think to yourself, do I really need this? It's kind of a metaphor for life where you want to carry everything, you want to plan for every single possible contingency. But the truth is that you have to have some faith and trust in the Lord that He's going to provide and take care of you. And there were times when, yeah, we, we, needed bandages, we needed uh, to work on those blisters or cuts or whatever injuries we were getting. Um, but we didn't need all this extra equipment. We were able to, to get those supplies for the, the first aid things that we needed uh, along the way. So really, it was a question of what are you bringing with you, both physically, what did you pack with you, but also what kind of thoughts, feelings, emotions, struggles, challenges are you bringing with you on this journey, right? whether it's uh, trying to figure out what you're gonna do after graduation or trying to figure out what you're gonna do about a job, stuff going on at home with the family, um, stuff going on uh, with work or your particular major, your class. 
We were all bringing some some heavy bags with us on on this journey. By the time we got to to the end, we kind of pared it down. We 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 cut back, unpacked some things, and we were really able to see what we needed in the end and what we need to to continue traveling with uh, through this journey of life. I love the idea of pilgrims taking things with them to discern, making decisions about jobs or home life or even vocations. What a great opportunity to discern that while on pilgrimage. And it's interesting because Father Eduardo shared a similar story about his vocational discernment to the priesthood. We'll link that story in the description. But being a campus chaplain, he really saw this pilgrimage as a unique way for him to live out his mission. When it comes to like overall just being a chaplain at a university, you get to see students for maybe about four to five years and then they're gone, they graduate, they move on to the next thing. So you really see them grow over the course of those years. When it comes to the Camino, the Camino is like a, it's like a smaller version of that. It's like, it's like a speed run version. Right? So we're there, we have a set number of times, a set number of days that, that we're walking this Camino. You get to know the students from the beginning. You, you build these connections. You see where they're at and their own kind of expectations for, uh, for the whole journey. And then you see them grow, get tired, struggle day to day, hour to hour. And instead of seeing them change and grow over the course of several years, you see that in a couple of days, and you end up building these, these strong connections with them, right? We had mass every day, we, we prayed together every day, we would pray the rosary as we were walking. Uh, it was an awesome opportunity to, to get to know them better, um, to hear their own stories, to see their own witness, and it gave me the, the strength and the encouragement that I needed in my faith as well. You know, we were walking a lot with um, with kind of like hiking sticks, hiking poles, right? And I like to think uh, that some of the people that were there on the Camino with us, some of, some of the other people in our group were like our, our metaphorical hiking poles. They were there to kind of help push us. We were pushing each other and helping each other go up those hills, uh, go over the, the little creeks and rivers that we, we had to traverse. Overall, I think it would have been much harder to make the Camino if I didn't have that group, if I didn't have those students, those professors with me. The hiking poles are there to help and support you on your journey. So who are the people that are supporting you and encouraging you on your journey? And how can you be supportive of others, like Dahlia was talking about in our previous story? You know, to wrap up this whole series on the Camino, I think it's interesting to think about how the trip ends. Dr. Ruiz talked about an almost disappointment in the ending and appreciating the journey more than the destination. Father Eduardo has a cool connection that I think ties everything up nicely. It's something that really doesn't hit you until after you think about it, right? Because in the moment, you're there like, oh my gosh, I finally made it. Here are the relics of St. James. But you don't think about it later and say to yourself, you know what? He kind of made the same journey that I just did too, right? He didn't have a car. He might have had, like, he definitely had like a boat, maybe a horse. He had to really struggle to, to get there, to make that long journey. And so you feel like you have some kind of camaraderie or connection in that sense um, with this particular saint who was willing to make these grand sacrifices to share the faith, to share his own experiences of Christ. St. James made sacrifices to share his faith, and these pilgrims made sacrifices and are now sharing their faith with us and with their community. And that's the beauty of this show. That's the beauty of this series, the beauty of the mission of Max Studios, to share the stories of Christ alive in others, so that in hearing the stories, my faith will become stronger, your faith will be stronger, and that we can see Christ alive in other people and their experiences. So what do you think? Is the Camino on your bucket list or is it something else? Where would you want to go? What would you want to do to help you improve your relationship with God so that you can let go of some baggage or get clarity on your purpose so that we can live out our God-given mission in this world? Let's discuss it in the comments. And for Max Studios, I'm Kyle Hyman. Until next time, God bless.